Welcome to Beam Corner channel. My name is Chris and in this video I will talk about data tree. 90% of problems in Grasshopper come from the wrong manipulation of data tree. Every week I get many questions regarding this topic and most of them can be easily solved with one component from Tree Ribbon. I know that among 26 components it's not that easy to choose the proper one. But today I will show you one really powerful that can even replace others. Enjoy! Pathmapper. The Pathmapper component you can find in the tab Sets, Tree, Pathmapper. This component allows you to perform lexical operation on data tree. I have barely started and already I have used difficult words. Ok, so lexical operation are logical mapping between data paths and indicates which are defined by textual masks and patterns. Do you remember masks? I have talked about them in another video. Check this out to understand it better. To simplify, Pathmapper helps with reorganizing elements in tree or change the tree structure. If you work with complex data structure, you need to rearrange your trees quite often. In Grasshopper, you can find several components for that purpose, such as Flutter, Craft, Trim, Simplified, and Flip. All of them might be not sufficient while operating on multiple trees or if custom rearrangement is needed. In many cases, using the Pathmapper component is the only way to find a solution. This component has also disadvantages, but I will tell you about them later in this video. Ok, let's start with something easy. I'm going to create some data. In this case, it will be just one value put in the data. We select our Pathmapper component and connect data. The component starts working after writing the source path. The easiest way to obtain the source path is just go to inbuilt functions and create flatten or graft mapping. Component will change color to green and will start working. Now we can modify our target path as we wish. For example, we can write just path number 5 and element will be placed in this path. We can freely add new paths and branches. Let's go to more advanced examples. For all operations we are going to use our base tree. This tree consists of 24 points placed in 12 branches with 2 items each. The source path is fixed and is given by the input tree. You can only set the target path. By right clicking on the component you can find built in mappings inside the path mapper. I always use one of them to automatically find my source path. To make flatten operation we change our target tree to zero, so all elements will be placed in just one branch. You can clearly see that on the param viewer where is just only one branch. We can compare now these two trees. Ok, so our base tree has two paths. In Pathmapper, that corresponds with the big letter B and big letter A. In the case, I'll always describe with the small letter I. Flatten operation means that we are going break down our structure. Instead of A and B paths, we are going to have just one and it will be zero. So all indicates will be put together and result will be just one branch and 24 items. Now we are going to graft function. In this case we are going to have more paths, so our source will be the same as in the previous example. To graft we need to add one more path, and in this case we are going to move indicates from the item level to the path level to get more branches. Ok, so let's look on the, our first branch from our base tree. It was 0 semicolon 0, and after grafting we change this branch into 2. 0 semicolon 0 semicolon 0 and 0 semicolon 0 semicolon 1. On the param viewer of the data tree you can see that we add two branches to the each last paths. Now we proceed to trim tree operation. As the name suggests we are going to cut some branches. In this example we are going to remove path B, so the last path in our tree. It doesn't mean that we are going to delete all elements from the path B. All these elements will be moved to the item level. 
In other words, we are going to merge all branches which has the same number at the beginning. In our example 0 semicolon 0, 0 semicolon 1 and 0 semicolon 2 will be merged together. That's why we will get 6 items in this branch. To see it better, let's check out how our points looks like in the Rhino. As you can see, we still have 24 points, we haven't deleted anything. But instead of 12 branches, we have just 4. There is a set of constants that help with mapping, for example path index. We can use that constraint if we want only the branch names to be changed and the data items remain on the same branches, just mask will be changed. This will give us the option of extracting the amount of branches from the source and translate the same amount of the target branches. In this case the whole structure with items and branches is moved to the target branches. So as a result we will always get branches in a sequence from 0 to the number of branches minus 1. Items remain in the same position. Next one is a path count. There is also an option to make a link between the number of items or branches and the index number of the target branch. For example, when the source branch is defined as uh, A and B and the target branch as path count, the final branch name will be in our case 12, because there are 12 branches in our example. In another words, path count is a constant value and describes amount of branches in the tree. A similar option to path count is item count constant. This will define a number based on the number of items in a branch. You can use that constant to make reverse operations. And you will reverse all items in your tree. In the target path, just write item count minus 1 minus i. Now I have an exercise for you. I have shown you how to make a reverse operation on the items with the use of the path mapper component. But how you will reverse elements inside branches? Write your solution in comments or send it into my mail, chris at learngrasshopper.com. Last one but not least, flip matrix. Fit matrix component works fine just with two dimensional matrix. In case of more branches, it will give us an error. However, path mapper component was created to these exercises. You can have as many paths as you want and you can easily switch between them. In example, we switch our first path, A, with the items I. To summarize, the tree path mapper option lets you reorganize the branch structure by renaming the original path of the branches and index data to a new target path. However, there is one big disadvantage of using this component. If any change in your source tree will happen, then the component will stop working. Any simplification operation before the path mapper will block this component. That's why you need to be very precise about all your changes in the script and be aware of how is your data structured. That's all for today. I know that one component will not solve all your problems with data tree manipulation. But for sure it can make life easier. Please subscribe to this channel for further videos about data tree structure. If you have any question regarding it, just write in the comments below and I will try to help you. Thanks for watching, see you next time, have a good one.